Welcome to another God Wars Dungeon boss guide, this time being at Kriara or Armadale God Wars Dungeon as some know it. This is going to be a duo or a dolo guide depending on exactly what you're doing. It's a very useful method for getting high kill long trips without the use of a supply ult, although you can use one of course anyway to make it even longer. And uh, in general just killing the boss more efficiently as, uh, as we know Kree's not the, the most efficient boss to kill whether you're a solo or a duo depending on what method you use. It does have some similarities to the usual solo method and involves one player using chin chompers and one player directly attacking the boss. Kriara is probably the most annoying of all the God Wars dungeon bosses in my opinion. Uh, he's level 580, has 255 HP, uh, uses all three combat styles but his magic attacks do roll off uh, range defense, a common misconception that one. Uh, he also only uses melee if you stop attacking him, so if you uh, lose aggression, which obviously happens when you click off him or anything like that. Um, so something that we will be using to do this method uh, effectively, so yes it involves Kree wandering over and trying to stick his claw into you basically. Kree and his three minions all count as Aviancy, so can be killed on a Slayer task which you can unlock for 80 points and it is highly recommended that you uh, kill Kree on task although um, they can be somewhat difficult to get and might involve some Terrell skipping if you're low on Slayer points. Uh, the method is doable off task but the kills will be slower and the uh, uh, Chinchomba cost overall will be higher. This method involves one person attacking the boss, we're going to call them the Bolter, and one person using Chin Chompers on the minions, so we're going to call those the, uh, the Chinna, and there are alternative gear options for both. Uh, firstly for the Bolter, uh, you want your best ranged weapon in the form of either an Armadale Crossbow with Diamond Dragon Bolts E, or a Twisted Bow with Dragon Arrows. Note the enchanted bolts for the crossbow are vital here to increase damage. You'll want at least one armadillo item for protection if not using the crossbow, so this can be one of the armor pieces, Blessed Dragon Hide or even Dehide Boots or Braces. Uh, you don't need any other protection, though a Zamorak piece is recommended if you're not using full armadillo. Yeah, um, there are Zamorak monsters that roam the armadillo area, and uh, if, yeah, if you're not using full armor, you might as well just have one piece of Blessed Dragon Hide that is a uh, Zamorak. Use the Slayer Helm imbued if you're on task, and if not, I prefer to use a Tank Helm, such as the Varax Helm or the Justishar Helm for the uh, good tank stats and the prayer bonus. Uh, you want either the Ring of Suffering imbued or the Archer's Ring imbued. And a duo, I recommend using the Ranging Cape with the Vorkarth head. Um, if you have it 99 for the extra defense and prayer bonus. If not, use the Assembler or the uh, Ava's Accumulator. For the chin of the setup is almost identical apart from the use of chin tompers. You can use red or black chins depending on exactly how much you want to spend. Uh, black chins have twice the range strength as red chins and the difference is noticeable but they are also double the price. Uh, your offhand can either be a tank shield such as the dragon fire shield or crystal shield emphasizing range defense here although if you're higher defense and have other good defensive stats then a twisted buckler or dragon fire ward are also great options. Otherwise it's the same principles as the bolter though gear upgrades or downgrades are not quite as important. As the minion you'll be chilling off, you roll off that, that minion's defense and it's, uh, it's very low so you don't need quite as much accuracy as you will to hit uh, the big bird who has uh, yeah, just the plus 200 range defense. The inventories are more or less the same for both so I'm going to go through those together. Both of you will need a crossbow and a mithril grapple to enter the lair so if you're the bolter and you're bringing a twisted bow as your attack weapon, uh, bring an extra bronze crossbow and drop it as soon as you get across. Uh, you'll need an ecumenical key if not getting kill count which is what I recommend you use although you can just uh, get kill count in the area if you don't want to go into the wilderness. Uh, both of you should bring a rune pouch to cast blood spells and make sure you're on ancients for this so bring uh, whatever uh, whatever runes for your best blood spell usually going to be uh, blood runes, death runes and soul runes and a uh, kodai wand also helps here too. Uh, your best magical staff or wand as I said with an occult necklace is sufficient for the minions. They've got low magic levels and subsequently low defense so not too much accuracy needed for them and a blowpipe for the minions is fine as they're very low defense here. It means they'll die pretty quickly at post kill. For potions, a mix of uh, ranging or bastion potions, sarodome and brews and super restores. Uh, the ratio you bring depends on exactly how long you want to stay for and how high your defense level and defense bonuses are. I usually go for about 5 brews, 10 restores and only 2 bastion potions since Kree drops range pots at a rate of uh, 1 in 15 so you don't usually need too many more of these uh, to sustain for the entire trip. Other things you bring are optional, the imbued heart helps quite a lot with mage defense during the kill. Uh, from Wingman 3, the main minion, and also when you're barraging afterwards. However, uh, you may be brewing down constantly here as the damage output can be quite high on some kills, so you're just going to be brewing down your mage level, so there's not really much point bringing in the heart, and you might as well swap it out for either a restore or a brew. Most of you probably already know how to get to the area, but I'm going to show you anyway. Teleport to Trollheim using one tab and then revert it. Uh, make sure you're on Ancients, of course, and uh, make your way towards the Gobbles dungeon to the north and climb down the ladder. 
Travel immediately south once you enter the dungeon and watch out for any NPCs you don't have protection against. So I recommend uh, just uh, checking for the spiritual mages and rangers that might attack you. You will need a mithril grapple and a crossbow equipped to reach the Armadale Fortress along with a range level of 70. And uh, once across you can drop both of these items if you bought the bronze crossbow. In my opinion, it's best to use ecumenical keys for Armadale Gobble's dungeon since getting the kill count is uh, significantly more awkward than any of the other bosses. However, you can kill the aviancies in the Armadale area if you don't have a key. And if you don't have Zamorak protection, be careful in the air and just make your way towards the boss area, hiding just outside uh, if you need to. This method involves one player attacking Kree and one player chilling off the minions. So if you're familiar with the solo method, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. And uh, if not, I will explain the mechanics now. Kree does not use melee attacks unless you become unaggressive to him or both players in the room become unaggressive. Um, yeah, so that can happen when you eat some food, drink a potion, or any other action that stops you from attacking the boss. So uh, turning auto retaliate off is important for this. Uh, when this happens, he'll wander over to you, and you get a nasty shock in your ears usually. Uh, so turn your uh, turn your game sounds down for this one. Um, you know what I'm talking about once you start doing this. Uh, however, uh, you will be using this to your advantage. Using these mechanics, it's possible to stack the minions with the boss. In this case, we'll be chinning off the melee minion, although it is possible with the others. Uh, it's just a lot simpler with the uh, minion. It doesn't involve any kind of timing or anything. Chin chompers, as you know, hit multiple targets, but the damage rolls off the defense of the original target. So in this case, it will be the melee, melee minion. Uh, Flight Kalisa, it was a very low defense, uh, especially compared to Kree. The easiest way to set this up is by standing in the corner at the start of uh, every kill in the position I'm in and uh, both players should activate protect from range and wriggle at all times during the kill otherwise they will meet a swift death of 71 Kree maxes with her uh, or his range attack I should say. Uh, as soon as Kree spawns both players do not attack they let Kree wander over uh, make sure you've got auto retaliate off and uh, just before she's about to launch a melee attack the timing isn't always perfect uh, the bolter should attack Kree and will hold him in place. The melee minion will have wandered over to and will line up perfectly with Kree in Chinchompa range and the Chinampa can begin uh, attacking the minion. It is that simple and there's pretty much no other mechanics to um, talk about. Often if the bolter does not do enough damage or the chins in terms of their damage split uh, kills the minion before Kree, uh, which does happen quite a lot, um, the chinna will switch to their range gear or their uh, range weapon I should say and uh, start attacking Kree themselves. Uh, if Kree still isn't dead by the time the melee minion respawns the chinna sh should start chinning off the uh, minion again. Once Kree is dead, focus on the mage minion wingman Scree and use your toxic blowpipe special attack if needed. Then use blood spells to heal up on the ranger and the melee if he has respawned as well. Uh, you should have plenty of time between kills usually. Each aviancy drops bones as well so you'll get at least 4 and sometimes more uh, bones per kill and heal up even further or fill your inventory with food for the next kill. I'm just going to show you the cycle again one more time, but this time with the chins doing more damage on Kree and the bolter hitting harder overall. The kills will vary, uh, there will not be the same kill every time. Put your prayer up a few seconds before Kree spawns in case the timer has messed up. I want to stress that as well. Uh, there has been an occasion where the timer's uh, got it wrong and Kree spawned and smacked a 65 on me. And uh, yeah, it can end the trip pretty much. And if you die with the uh, chin chompers, as you know, you will lose all of them. You can't get them back. So uh, just to be a bit wary and uh, just be a bit wary. What HP you're on at the start of each kill as well. Do not attack when the boss spawns and let him wander over. The bolter should hit Kree as he gets into melee range. Uh, the chin attacks the melee minion and then if the minion dies first, focus on Kree and then if another one respawns, focus on that minion and uh, finish the boss off. Kill off the mage minion and then heal off the ranger or both of the minions uh, if the melee one respawns and uh, make use of food drops as well as bones to peaches to heal up and prepare for the next kill. This has similarities with the regular chinning method, uh, though you have the luxury of a friend or a second account to keep Kree aggroed so you don't need to click on him in between chin chopper hits. Entering the room is much less complicated than perhaps the Zami Twisted Bow method that I've also got on the channel, feel free to check that one out. Uh, put protect from range on before you enter the room and uh, run towards the corner of the room and uh, both stand there and simply wait for Kree to wander over and then uh, you're off to go with your respective roles. Now I'm just going to go through a few mistakes or things that can go wrong whilst you're doing this. So probably the one and the most common mistake is the bolter firing at the boss a little bit too early, uh, which means it's impossible for the chinna to stack both the minion and Kree. If this happens, the bolter should just off Kree for a few seconds and let him fully come into melee range. You may have to tank a, a nasty scree here, that's what I like to call the attack. 
and uh, yeah, your ears might get a shock depending on your timing. Uh, anyway, as soon as you can see the damage splats on both the minion and crew from your chin chompers and the XP drops pretty much give it away, you're going to get some pretty fat XP drops, especially on task with uh, black chins. And yeah, the bolter will need to remain aggressive to Kree the whole time. So if the bolter needs to eat or drink a potion, uh, make sure you keep clicking on Kree in between. This is probably the only way this method can really go wrong. Other general mistakes are uh, forgetting to prey range, not safing up a little bit sometimes. Uh, the combo potential can be quite nasty here as uh, Kree's attack speed is very, very fast. And uh, if you get a bit unlucky with the uh, mage hits, then uh, yeah, just be a bit careful with your HP. So I'd probably say stay above 50 and uh, yeah, just be a little bit careful. Don't be afraid to uh, combo eat sometimes. Just a few tips and tricks and things I've learned from uh, lots of experience of doing this. Uh, using blood spells and bones to peaches after each kill means you'll conserve Saradom and Bruise just for when you have the occasional uh, bad kill. For example, if the uh, minion dies early and your weapon's noodle on the boss, which as we all know happens quite a lot when you're fighting a boss with high defense and plus 200 range defense. Occasionally Kalisa will respawn if you don't do enough damage on him. Uh, the first time and uh, Kree decides to be a very tanky bird. Uh, depending on Kalisa's HP you can either kill him off straight away after Kree's dead or wait to heal off after you've dealt uh, with the mage minion. As with the other minions you can stack them with ice spells if you have a Kodai wand and safely heal up without the melee minion inflicting any further damage. Juggling food and potions in between kills is a great way to ensure you don't go through your bruise too quickly and yeah, as I said that can happen if you have a, a bad kill. Kree is a very profitable boss, but uh, only, and I mean only if you get lucky on the uh, unique drops. It's a 1 in 1 to 7 chance to roll the Armadil armor table, uh, which can receive the helmet, the chain skirt, and the chest plate, uh, with this in order of the cheapest to most expensive. The Armadil hilts a rare one, 1 in 508, but still a very nice drop to see, but it's uh, sitting under 10 mil at the moment. You can get Godsword Shards from the boss and the minions, and uh, very, very rarely, but not so much for me, armor drops from the minions, yes. I've had uh, two Armadil chain skirts from uh, Wingman Screw, the mage minion. So, yeah, he's almost made me as much money as uh, Kriara has. Uh, of course, there's the extremely rare uh, pet Kriara at a rate of uh, 1 in 5,000. And the curved bone, 1 in 5,013. Thought I might as, well, might as well just mention that, you never know. That said, the regular drop table is complete trash with only the coins really worth picking up. Unfortunately, Kree, unlike the other Gobbles dungeon bosses, does not drop any restore or prayer potions, so trips are limited by prayer. Unless you're going to use a supply ult, of course. So you can use the altar, of course, occasionally to restore prayer every 10 minutes at uh, the end of the kill. So it is best to wait until your prayer is very low before using this to maximize the amount of prayer points. This means you'll likely lose money in the short term if you don't get a unique drop uh, every trip due to yeah, the high cost of uh, chin chompers. Uh, however, long term, Kree is a very profitable boss if you do get the uniques on rate and you will make some uh, great profits. So yeah, for me, three chain skirts, a chest plate and a helmet so far and over 600 kill counts. Uh, then went 300 dry uh, after getting two drops from the first 150 KC. But uh, yeah, the two minion drops um, have been uh, very helpful, let's just say, to my overall profit slash loss on the boss. This method for me makes the boss a lot more bearable. Uh, solos are fine with Chin Chompers, to be honest, as well, just uh, using the same principles as this method, but I don't like uh, whether it is solo or duo, not using Chins and just uh, bolting the boss the entire time, as you can have some pretty terrible kills due to that massive range of defense, and it's just not fun overall. So, yeah, very useful if you want to do Krieg with some friends, or you've got an ult and you maybe want to hunt the pet and you want to use it to stay for longer trips and um, just get faster ones in general. And if you are doing that, I would just make sure your uh, ult or the person bolting, or make sure if you want the pet, you're the one chinning and your ult is the one bolting and just be careful that it doesn't uh, steal too many kills the chinna should get the kill 90 percent of the time but if the um the uh, diamond dragon bolt specs go off a few times or the ult has a twisted bow and that hits quite high which uh, does does hit the occasional 70 on a slayer task just to hit zeros the other 10 times uh, just uh, be careful with the gear and just make sure that that doesn't steal too many kills and potential pet chances uh, from you that is all for this video. I hope you uh, found this one useful. And if you've got any uh, comments or questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll do my best to uh, answer them. But otherwise, I uh, wish you the best of luck on your either pet hunting or if you're just uh, doing Kree to fill out the collection logs or trying to get the uh, armor pieces or just uh, want to have some fun with a friend. Or, uh, you know, I wouldn't call this I wouldn't ever call this boss fun, to be honest, but it is very profitable. And I guess if you're making money, then it probably becomes fun. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one.